Okay, folks, today I'm going to do something a little different. We're going to be talking about the Disability Assistance Service at Walt Disney World and Disneyland and what's going to change. Okay, everybody. We're going to be talking about the Walt Disney World and Disneyland DAS. It's basically the Disability Assistance Services. Um, some big changes are coming as of May 20th of this year, of 2024. What the Disability Assistance Service was, was the essentially assistance for those folks who could not wait in line for an extended time period, such as like an hour... 120 minutes, you know, as has been seen with a lot of these big attraction rides. And essentially what it was is you could come back and get something like a lightning lane type thing or a um, something equivalent to a Genie Plus without actually having to pay an additional service for it. Um, originally, it was set for those folks with physical disabilities and cognitive disabilities or challenges. Um, this was a fantastic idea. And essentially what you did is you signed up for it. They would, you would go to an attraction, get a time and then come back at that particular time. And you and your entire party would go ahead and get on the ride or attraction. Over the last few years and over the last well, year from what we've understood from the Walt Disney Company itself and theme park relations is that the use for this has quadrupled to the point where it is now suspected that there have been a little bit of nefarious activities with this particular service where people are sort of been gaming the system, where they're using it instead of actually purchasing the Genie Plus for certain attractions. Um, I can understand what Disney is doing and I can understand why. So that is an, that's another story all to itself. Um, what it is going to be now is DAS is going to be specifically for those folks with cognitive challenges, autism and other developmental um, challenges. So that's one big change. The other big change is that it will now require the person who is needing this assistance to actually be at the attraction and participate in the attraction. Um, it's also now going to limit the amount of additional participants with the individual to about four family members or so. Now, that does not necessarily address what's going to be happening with those folks who have physical challenges, such as myself. Amputee, hi! What's going to happen with that is, from what I've been reading, is that the only change for that, for those folks with physical challenges, is it will be just like it was when I went to my trip at Disneyland, where I rented a scooter, and I was able to go to particular attractions and get a return time for those attractions. No big deal. Um, with those parks that are more ADA compliant for physical challenges, you go through the regular line just as you would go through the line if you had all everything working and didn't have a physical um, physical challenge. Your, you take your scooter through the queue and they would take you over to a separate loading area. You would get on the attraction there and enjoy the attraction. Come back to that particular loading area. Get onto your scooter and off you go to the next attraction and enjoy your day. Um, with DAS, they spend a little bit more attention on making sure that those folks that have the cognitive challenges um, are able to to, well, leave the queue if they need to, or if they're going to, uh, if they have an issue where they just 
cannot deal with all the stimuli, then they will address that. And I'm not quite sure how they'll address it, but clarification can be found on the web pages. What I'm also going to do right now is I'm going to post a few pages um, or screenshots from the Disney uh, websites, from Walt Disney World, Walt Disneyland. This is just a quick example of what you would see when you start to sign up and register for DAS. And yes, you have to register with Disneyland and Disney World for DAS. You must meet with a cast member before your trip or before you enter the park. This is also that it is not going to be handled now directly by Disney. This is going to be handled through a third party uh, company that will work with Disney and contracted with Disney to actually um, evaluate folks and make sure that there's no gaming of the system anymore. Um, I, I have to admit, I agree with it. I agree with what Disney is doing. I sort of endorse this idea because, you know, I mean, this should be something that is available for those, for those folks and those individuals who need this and not necessarily a quick, well, now I don't have to pay for the, for the Genie Plus or the Lightning Lane, so yeah, come on, everybody, and you and your cadre of 20 individuals go into the line. This is something that's not going to be happening anymore, and I actually I, I, I applaud Disney for doing this. This is fantastic. This also means that it will now be more available for those people who need it. So let's get into it a little bit, and let's talk a little bit about what's going to be happening and go through some of these screenshots of what I was able to find. Okay, folks, let's get into this a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pop up some of the screenshots here that I was able to find from the uh, Walt Disney Company and from their websites on planning a trip on how to get everything all set up and everything. Now, Understand that what I'm going to be going through here is just an overview of how DAS exists at this time and things that are going to be implemented as of May 20th. Okay. This is not anything where I am going to be going and answering any what if questions on, well, what if I have this or what if I do this or what if I'm going here? What if I'm going there? Those questions can be answered on the web page and by cast members if you contact guest services. Okay. This is just a quick overview of how it stands now. All right. So please be aware of that. All right. So first one, I'm bringing it up here. Uh, this is just the, again, this is the intro of learning how this service will support guests who have devent, del, diva, okay, there it is, the first one, developmental disability like autism or similar, similar issues, um, or where you can't wait in the conventional queue with those issues. So that's, it's just a quick guideline here today. This is going to go into full effect as of May 20th. Um, here it says May 19th, but this is for guests who are visiting from April 9th through May 19th. There will be a pre-arrival conversation to determine your elig eligibility for DAS. And this is what I was talking about having to register for DAS. All right. And those interviews and the conversations will be between two or 30 days prior to to visiting the park, okay? Um, as it says here, in-person conversations to determine eligibility for DAS will continue to be at guest relation locations, okay? And this is something you should do before you enter the park, not after, all right? Make sure you do this before you enter the park, okay? This is something that I have seen others talk about, and they are very, very adamant about pushing the idea of before you walk in, 
before you walk in the gate. All right. Uh, you can book up to two one hour return windows for select experiences using our DAS advanced planning option. Okay. For clarification, please hit the website. Talk to guest relations, please. Uh, DAS is valid up to 30 days from the start of the registration. And once the service has elapsed, guests will need to re-register. Okay? That's a change because you did before have 120 days. Now you have 30. Okay? At least that's what I think I understand. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, what you need to know about DAS. DAS is intended to accommodate a small percentage of guests who due to a developmental development developmental good lord i can't say that right developmental disability such as autism or similar are unable to wait in a conventional queue for extended periods of time uh, DA, das does not provide immediate access for experiences but rather allows guests to request a return time for a specific experience that is comparable to the current standby wait. Okay? So this is not a instant type thing. Be aware of that. This is not, I sign up for it and I go. No, no, no. You get a return time. The guest who is requesting to use DAS must be present during the registration and experience the attraction when redeeming a DAS return time at Walt Disney World theme parks. Okay, this is also the same rule at Disneyland. All right, just to be aware of that, that's the same throughout. This is basic steps on how it works. Step one, register. Okay, you register either in person or a live chat video. All right, again, clarification can be found on the web pages or through guest relations. Uh, step two, request a return time. After you're registered and enter the theme park, you can request your return, your first return time. Okay. Step three, enjoy the park. Have your day. All right. So that's just a quick, quick overview there. And here it is speaking with a cast member. Guests can meet virtually with a cast member using a live video chat to determine what services may be appropriate to support their visit to the theme parks, including DAS. Please note that you may have a pre-arrival conversation as soon as 30 days in advance to the par of a park visit. Okay? And, of course, it has that little link there that says speak with a cast member. That link's not active on the video. Sorry. You'll have to actually go to the web page. Okay. Now, here's the important bit here. Please note, guests visiting now through May, 20, May 19th may visit a theme park guest relation location to speak with a cast member in-person registration will no longer be available to at theme park guest relation locations starting on may 20th okay so please be aware of that after may 20th you can't just show up and have your interview you actually have to do this before you go to the park okay please be aware the next one here same day DAS return time self selection. Guests registered with in the DAS program can make return time selections in the My Disney Experience mobile app on the day of their park visit. Okay? You can use your app. You can use the app. Woo! This will help out a little bit so you don't actually have to so go and start um crashing lines <laughs> for lack of a better term. Um, any member of a DAS party can obtain a return time for the whole party, but the guests registered for the DA for DAS must be present and experience the attraction when the DAS return time is redeemed. So th what that means essentially is if you have registered for DAS and you are the individual that needs that assistance, you must be present to redeem it. You can't all of a sudden send your family of four, go off and ride the ride while you go get a uh, Mickey bar. Okay. No, no. Y you got to go and do it because you said you were going to go and do it. So just be aware of that. 
Um, DAS return times are valid until the park closes or an attraction closes for the day. Okay, so it's good for the day. A party can hold can only hold one DAS return time at once, so you can't stack them. So this is very much unlike Genie Plus, where you can actually start to stack a few. You, you can't play fiddle-faddle with this one. Sorry, folks. How to access the DAS return time self-selection tool. After entering the park, open the My Disney Experience mobile app, log into your account, tap on the, on the hamburger menu with three little bars, at the bottom of the screen, then tap the DAS return button to select the attraction to make your, make your return time. So very much like a Genie Plus experience. Okay, it's similar. The tool can also be accessed from an attraction detail screen. Okay, just be aware of that. If this is any more confusing other than that, definitely contact guest services, please. Okay. They have a lot more information than I'm going to have or would ever know. Um, they can answer more que more in-depth questions, such about particular issues that you are dealing with and need attention with, okay? Please be aware of that and please utilize that, okay? That's what they're there for. That's what they're hoping to do and help you out with, all right? And I'm hoping that this actually helped out a little bit. I'm hoping that this actually gave some good information about at least what to expect if you're going to be using the disability assistance service. All right. I am hoping that you are, if you need it, you can utilize it and it will make your day at Disney even better. They're trying their best here, folks, to accommodate everybody. And I believe they are winning on this game. In fact, it has been... I, I read something earlier and I can't remember exactly where it came from, but apparently the Walt Disney World parks are the most accessible parks for wheelchairs, scooters, and folks with physical challenges. Um, I, I, I'm not surprised about that. Um, they have worked very hard to go above and beyond for ADA compliance. And I applaud that. I truly do. It's fantastic. So again, I hope this helped out. I hope that this is able to help you on your next trip or next vacation out to a Disney park. And I'm hoping you folks have a fantastic time getting out there and traveling. And again, as my sister and I always have said, don't stop traveling. Get out there, get out there and do it. There are ways that they can help you and you please utilize those ways because adventure should never stop. All right, folks, thanks much. If this was helpful and if this is some content that you would like to see more of, please let me know in the, in the uh, comments. Also, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. That way you never miss anything new. And also, throw a like in there if you like it, okay? Helps out the algorithm. All right, thanks. We'll see you soon, folks. Bye.